From the land of conjurers flying through the internet to your device like a UAP, hauntingly unexplained and downright weird, this is the Witching Hours, and we are ready to take off in the flash of an eye. Good evening, one and all, to wherever and whenever you are listening to this program. I am John of the Frost, and joining me as always is tonight's guest, Medium Jenny Lee. How are you doing, Medium Jenny Lee? <laughs> yeah. Catching up on sleep. That's what, I, that's what I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. It was a long time. It was a lot of sleep. It was a lot of catching up I needed to do, I think. So. <clears throat> uh, no, I think we're okay right now. Oh, they can't hear you. Let me try it. Let me see what's going on. It's, um, I, you know, it's um, that time, that time again. It keeps, I don't know, there's been... Yeah, that's what I feel like. Um. <laughs> Here, are you hearing me now? Yeah, I think so. Does it work now? It always worked before, but I feel like there's been some updates or something going on with our software. Meow. Is can you hear me, meow? Things up. Okay, yeah, they can hear me. I was saying, see, Frosty just didn't want me. He didn't want you guys to hear what I said is what happened. He made it on purpose. He, I said he slept so late today that he wouldn't even tell me what time he woke up. Yeah, it was pretty late. <laughs> it was uh, it was much needed. It was much needed. And that's what yes. you have to do every once in a while, right? Like I It is, like, yeah. I feel like once a year I do something where I go to bed like extremely early. Or I sleep extremely late. It's like a reset that my body does every yeah, night. Yeah, you do. You have to yeah. have a reset. Mm. I catch up on all those early mornings all in, all in one day. <laughs> Everybody's here today. Mm. We got Keisha, <clears throat> Journey of Self Discovery. Yeah. The Wanderer is here. Linguist. CMC. Amber. Five we stream to, streak. Woo woo. We get to hang out with chat a little bit more than normal tonight, which is wonderful. Yeah, we can talk to chat. Yes. I've been thinking us, about adding it's just us Twitch streamers. Yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and um still always trying to find a way to make this part a little more interactive in our podcast version. So I got some ideas yeah. come up my sleeves. Let's hoaxers. If I don't know if you guys have been able to notice or not uh when it's coming up. Um, but we have this going on now. That's what, what? It's going to take a little bit. For some reason, it never works on the first one where I can put the messages oh, up. Oh, we the... can put up the comments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think people were noticing that. I think that's, uh, beneficial. So Hoag that way. Hoagies, hoagies. We can always kind of, uh, notate that we're actually, uh, seeing, <laughs> seeing Yes. So. I think that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, trick we learned from watching the Lightgate podcast. Yeah, once I saw that Mr. you could do that on Weaver. YouTube. Well, yeah, and like using um, <clears throat> YouTube and I guess uh, whatever program it is that everyone else is using. Streamlet. Uh, uh, what is it no. called? Stream Yard or something like that. Yeah, Streamyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has a, like built into it, mm -hmm. which we looked at using because there's definitely some huge benefits to it, but it's like. Um, yeah. I don't know. We wouldn't be able to it. do all the graphic stuff that we do here either. It's yeah. like, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I don't know. Yep. Well, anyhow, we ready to get into the news? Yep. I feel like those, um, the and Sesame Street, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> uh, Plants scream while they're being harvested, a new study finds. Plants scream? Oh, shit. Uh, now we can't eat plants anymore either. What are we going to eat? Well, that's how this starts off. Vegetarians were afraid. Vegetarians were afraid we've got some oh, news we're probably not going to like. Uh, plant, uh, plants admit sounds akin to screams when they're distressed, according to a new study. Our babies. They allegedly produce clicking noises that humans can't hear without the use of scientific equipment, researchers found. The research, which was published uh, back in 2023, showed that plants produce noises in times of acute distress. Um, 
Good Lord. Lilac uh, Haddany is an evolutionary biologist at Tel Aviv University. Uh, okay, hold on. She's a, mm-hmm. She deals with plants and her name is Lilac. Yes. Wow, that was meant to have meant mm-hmm. to be. <laughs> well, it could be Lilac. Oh. L I L A C H. I don't know. Oh, um, maybe. Yeah, if uh, I eat e- on the antennas. Yeah, even in a quiet field, there are actually sounds that we don't hear, and those sounds carry information. There are animals that can hear these sounds, so there is the possibility that a lot of acoustic interaction is occurring. Plants interact with insects and other animals all the time, and many of these organisms use sound for communication, so it would be very suboptimal for plants not to use sound at all. The mm-hmm. finding shows that plants which are distressed have an incredibly high-pitched popping noises, while unstressed plants do not emit noises. The study's definition of distressed mm-hmm. include, included plants that were having their stems cut or were dehydrated. However, it's not clear yet how the plants <laughs> Man, produce the, plants the noises. That I'm <laughs> Shit, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> I was so, so, there's one right over here, in this, and I know there's been a couple times where it's like, oh, I need some water. Probably yelling at me, and I can't hear it. It's terrible. I mean, just imagine if you did that to like a pet, you know, like you'd yeah. be animal cruelty and stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. um, how many prison consecutive terms would you be serving for plant uh, plant oh, abuse? Man. Uh, I mean, yeah, we... <laughs> my mom has a green thumb, but I do not, I do not hear that. This is awful. Oh, good. Linguists just watered her plants. So, you good know, for you, linguists. It's kind of interesting to think that like plants don't have a need to emit sound in this kind of in the same way that we don't really have a need to psychically develop our skills. So they're kind of dormant. And yeah. if, if plants had a need to talk to us, maybe, maybe, maybe what maybe we need to now, because apparently <laughs> you know, they're yelling at us. Plants were harmed in this study. You're right, Mr. Weird. They were. Yeah. <laughs> I hear they can or play babies. music too. Yeah. So I mean, the story we've been goes finding on. out a lot of things about plants and mushrooms and trees. And mm-hmm. yeah, there's a lot of communication going on that we're not aware of. Yeah, the wood, the whole wood wide web thing. Mm-hmm. Um, however, it's not clear yet how the plants produce noises. Now that we know that plants do emit sounds, the next question is who might be listening? We are currently investigating the responses of other organisms, both animals and plants. Uh, to these sounds, and we're also exploring our ability to identify and interpret the sounds in completely natural environments. It comes after a new study suggested that Western industrial diets may be changing the way humans digest plants. As modern diets lack fiber, the way our bodies break down cellulose found in the fruits and vegetables is changing. So, mm. yeah, here we go for story number one. Uh, it just well, reminded just- me... Of the uh, of the old tool part where uh, yeah tomorrow is Harvest track. Day yeah and for the carrots and for the carrots it is the Holocaust you know it is yeah. the Holocaust <laughs> let's wrap us wear yeah. glasses can I get an amen <laughs> yeah. amen um, can I get a hallelujah <laughs> story number two NASA is launching three sounding rockets into space during the total solar eclipse. NASA is preparing to launch three giant rockets towards the sun on the same day that the massive hot ball of light will appear. Why do we do stupid shit? (laughs) Well, if you would let me read the news article, I might illuminate. That wasn't real. (laughs) (laughs) I was hoping that was fake news. (laughs) Um, Well, they're not launching them at the sun. They're launching them into the uh, into the atmosphere uh, to study the. Well, we'll get to it. It's in the story. So okay, okay, continue. Um. as the hot ball of white appears to millions of people in North America uh, to be fully eclipsed by the moon. Most sky sky gazers will be eagerly awaiting the moments on Monday, April 8th, when the moon completely blocks the sun's disk, ushering in those precious few moments of totality, whereby darkness falls and the sun's outermost layer, the corona, becomes visible. But Mm -hmm. keen observers in Virginia, or those just Mm -hmm. tuning into NASA's online live stream, may also catch those rockets thundering into outer space on their way to the moon's shadow. Fear not, 
The U.S. Space Agency isn't launching any sort of attack on the sun, but is rather hoping to gather some valuable scientific data about how solar eclipses alter Earth's upper atmosphere. Well, that's what we were worried about. Mm. Like, at least they're not doing that. NASA is using spacecraft called sounding rockets that are equipped with scientific instruments to take measurements and perform experiments during a suborbital flight. The three rockets will launch from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia and will reach an intended altitude of 260 miles, NASA said. That's high enough to study disturbances during a total solar eclipse in the ionos- in the ionosphere, a region of Earth's atmosphere between 55 to 310 miles above the ground. The sounding mm-hmm. rockets had been previously launched and recovered in October from the White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico during the annular solar eclipse, a similar celestial event that was distinct for the ring of fire shape it created in the sky. This time around, NASA said the rockets have been refurbished with new instrumentation. We drove around mm-hmm. Wallops a couple times, like a couple summers ago. Yeah. I got to see where that was. Yeah. yeah so- Wallops. Studying the atmosphere. I don't know. I mean, it seems like a pretty yeah. scientific. I don't. I don't, I don't yeah, know if yeah, anything yeah. stands out to me. It's just the title of it is miscons is you know mm-hmm. misconstrued. Okay, okay, we can forgive that one. I guess they are gonna shoot a bunch of shit at the sun when we get a solar eclipse. See yeah. what happens. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I think I think some of the <laughs> some of the headlines going into the eclipse have been a little bit. Um, yeah, well, they're you know that's how they get people to read things. Sensational, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's becoming a huge issue. I think in general is the sensationalism and in, in journalism now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you can learn about like yellow journalism and all the stuff that's happened, but we living in the internet age where like there's so much news competing against itself, like everything is so clickbait now. Mm-hmm. And as well, I guess whether I wanted to be in it or not, to a certain degree, we're in journalism to a certain degree with the witching hours. We talk about news, we talk about topics, things like that. And I've known, you know, that's like one of the things with YouTube, you know, it's like, clickbait wins the day uh yeah. but i haven't i haven't really wanted to succumb to that which we've had some discussions about that before with like the fear-based mm-hmm. titles yeah, fear mongering. Um, mm-hmm. yeah and i think you're you know i think in the long run you're doing a disservice uh by going along with that but at, at the same time um there's an algorithm so i don't know i don't know what the answer is to that he's um, just worried about stargators now she thought you said Stargators. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen one of those yet, Keisha. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean they're not out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Water is that, right. We couldn't actually hit anything with the sun because it would just disintegrate. Yeah. And that's what we got. We got a comment from CMC about sensationalism being the opposite of journalism. But I think that's a problem. I don't know if we even really have real journalism anymore. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, so but kind of continuing ar- history. History person could go back and argue that there never was because it's always been like that. Yeah, I can get into, I can get into a big argument about that. Yeah, we, um, we don't we, we don't need to go down that right rabbit hole um, <laughs> or that gator hole. <laughs> yeah, you can That's look at the election of um, that. that it's just always been it's always been a mess. Well, yeah. so like. <laughs> Specifically, I guess we can do it tonight. We don't have anybody waiting on us. Um, yeah. uh, you can look at the election between uh, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, and they both have papers. Like, even though, like, then there's no, like, overt running for president, like, they're not out there on a stump, like, hey, elect me, Thomas Jefferson, or elect me, John Adams. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very behind the scenes. And, like, they both have newspapers that are like basically either aligned with Adams or aligned with Jefferson and they run campaigns against each other through the newspapers. They talk shit about each other. Yeah. Um, Some of which is not necessarily true. So when people today say, Oh, well, the Fox news is just uh, an arm of the right wing media and CNN is just an arm of the left wing media. I don't know other than it being overt, if it's really any different than what we had in yeah. the 1800s but mm-hmm. anyway i guess i don't know we could talk about that more sometime yeah. but it's interesting um story i think about that all the time with um just election season in general that it's so drawn out and elongated 
because they used to have to travel, actually travel from state to state to like get their message out. But like they could just do one one message uh -huh. and one piece and it would be like taken care of and it could everything could move so much faster, but we're still doing it the same way that we did back then. They yeah. still do all that traveling. They want to go shake the hands know, and just... kiss the babies and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like the traveling just wasn't done as much back then. That's like another thing with the history classes I talk about. Like, like, like nowadays, I don't know. I, I think you're familiar with it. I don't, a lot of other people who haven't been to this region aren't familiar with it, but you have two towns in Virginia, two cities, essentially one is called Petersburg and then the capital is Richmond. And like now from a car, I can go from Petersburg to Richmond in less than an hour, probably 45 minutes. I can get from Petersburg mm -hmm. to Richmond, maybe even 30 if like traffic isn't bad, like 30 minutes. It's not bad at all. But back in the day, that was a two day travel by horse. So yep. you would leave Petersburg. It would take a full day of traveling. You would stay at the halfway, at the halfway house, house, which is still there. And you'd get something to eat. And, you know, I don't know, maybe it was like Dungeons and Dragons. You got you a little bard in there, like playing some music or whatever in the tavern. Someone <laughs> jamming in there on a, on a piano or something. <laughs> and then you wake up the next day and you... The there's a war other... playing, playing a song in the halfway house. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have, yeah, and then you have a whole other day trip. Uh, so like when people, you know, when you talk about people seeing the 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 country during that period of time there weren't many people who did like most people were born and raised in the same county that they you know they they were born they lived and died in the same county that they they came mm -hmm. from you know yeah but anyway there's history lesson number two today so we'll see how many more we get in okay um so eclipse tourism expected to bring big bucks to areas in the path of totality Millions of Americans are planning to travel in the coming days to find the best spot to view the rare solar eclipse uh, occurring on April 8th. And the communities in its path are set for an economic boom from the influx of tourists. How many people in chat are traveling to see the eclipse? Let us know. A partial eclipse will appear in all continental U.S. states, but the line of totality or where there will be complete sun coverage will only span 15 states. Mm. And economists say they will reap the benefits. The eclipse Reapin. route. What's that? Reaping. Yeah. The eclipse route will travel from Mexico, uh, arching northeast from Texas to Ohio before reaching Canada and going back into Maine. Given that a solar eclipse will not be visible in the U.S. for another 20 years after Monday's events, really? Americans don't want to miss it. A we just had one. Like, what was what year was the last one? 2017? 2000 something like that mm -hmm. 2017 yeah yeah <clears throat> so the next one's not for 20 years yeah so That's i guess it'd be weird. 44 did you guys see it i did i was working at a high school and i did not like the principal but he that was one cool thing he did he bought the whole school's uh, solar eclipse glasses and took the whole school out on the football field and we got to watch it together it was really mm -hmm. cool I just remember being outside. Uh, I don't know. I guess I was probably in college then too. And um, I remember when we weren't in the total path again, just like this time. But mm -hmm. I remember it getting like twilight outside. Like mm -hmm. it felt like it was like 730 at night, but it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. I took some pictures of it. Mm -hmm. I should see if I can post those in the Discord. I think we should still be able to see it. You guys probably have a better advantage this time. I think we're this somewhere time. around 84% or 85% where we're going to okay, be at. Okay, I think that's like where we are too. Yeah. Um, I just remember it went through South Carolina last time, and now it's kind of, it seems to be going the opposite way. Mm -hmm. Like it's going, I think it was like this, um, going through the other way. Mm -hmm. That's United from like florida up to oregon or whatever i think Ooh. it went that way and now Michigan's, like... michigan's got 98 percent. that's yeah. pretty nice oh, wow Might as well call it 100. So cool. we have a lot of community members from michigan uh -huh. yeah that we you do guys all got your glasses <laughs> yeah or CMC... you're gonna make a pinhole camera <laughs> <laughs> cmc said hotels in the path of the eclipse are going for about a thousand dollars a night that's crazy. 
Ooh, they are reaping the benefits. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yeah. So um, uh, to continue there, let's see. So not a, for not another 20 years, a recent survey conducted by Consumers Insights uh, firm Lisa W. Miller and Associates found that 12 million Americans plan on traveling to get a better view of the eclipse. Wow. Of those, 14% said they'll be making a trek in an RV, 7% plan on booking a hotel or another place to stay, 4% on taking a flight, and 8% plan on camping out. Economic and financial analysis from the Perryman Group estimates that the states in the path of totality will collectively rake in nearly $1.5 billion wow. in direct expenditures by visitors. When considering the multiplier effects, the economic impact rises to be more than $4.6 billion. Hoaxers, do you mean an equator room? Equation room sounds like a math class. <laughs> $4.6 billion. Wow. Yeah, $4.6 billion. So big money in. Uh... Well, I hear they're jacking up the prices too. Like oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's what CMC said. Like a thousand dollars for a hotel room. Thousand dollars for a hotel room. That's yeah. nuts. Yeah. You did mean equator room. Okay, good. <laughs> so that's an a lot of people room. traveling. That's, that's cool. So if someone in here is traveling, let us know. Um, you know, I was thinking. I thought back, about it, but <clears throat> the the solar eclipse before that was when I was in middle school, and I know it was in the summertime because my friends and I were in the pool. And I, we did not have such a thing as solar eclipse glasses. You just stared at I the sun. Just looked at it. Yeah, that's probably why I'm blind now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at it in the pool. You know, we're like 12 or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't remember that. What, we, what year was that? Um, I, know I, I know I was in middle school. I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm sure we were in middle school so, around the same time. Uh, I was, let's say, 11, 12, 13. That would have been 90, 91, 92. 90, yeah, 90, 91, 92. Memory. Yeah, I remember very, very clearly. I guess we I, could Google it. I don't either, but I was moving around so much. I might not have been in the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Might not have been a I thing for me. I remember making the box, it, like the pinhole camera box with it for it. Oh, yeah. That's cool. But I don't remember actually seeing it. Mm. I'm really um, slow at making things. I probably like mm -hmm. took too long to make my <laughs> pinhole box. <laughs> like, too late. <laughs> it must have been a partial one. Because we've only had 15 total solar, solar eclipses. Huh. And there was not one in the 90s, according to this one bit of information. So in other words, you were just staring at the sun. There was no eclipse going on. <laughs> you were just in the pool. We just thought there at was. The sun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, now, just thought, and now your yeah, eyes are screwed. Like All right. Yeah. I can see shit. <laughs> Well, I thought you were going to say that you like froze to death because the temperature is supposed to drop. Um, I don't know. I don't remember it changing that much. Let's see. I don't know. I'm having a hard time finding it. Anyway, do you have another story for us? Yeah, I do. Um, scientists develop a six foot invisibility mega shield that can hide multiple people by bending light. And there's actually, mm. uh, I'll, I'll, as soon as I'm done reading the story, I'll, I'll, I'll link it on the Discord page because they actually have video of it working. So, oh, wow. Some people who grew up reading like the Harry Potter books and stuff have dreamed of owning their very own invisibility cloak. Uh, now that dream can become a reality as scientists have developed an invisibility mega shield. The, uh, it's selling for 699 British pounds. So that's probably roughly getting close to a grand for American dollars. Uh, the shield uses a precision engineered lens array to bend light, rendering objects behind it almost invisible. Um, the mega shield is big enough to conceal multiple people uh, standing side by side. Um, 
Want to experience the power of inv- invisibility? We've got you covered, said the Invisibility sh- Invisibility Shield Company. The Mega Shield is the brainchild of London-based Invisibility Shield Company, which came up with the I- initial idea back in 2022. Since then, the firm has developed and tested various cloaking devices before landing on the latest design. The Mega Shield measures six feet tall and four feet wide and is constructed from a high-grade polycarbonate. Using a precision-engineered lens array, light reflected from the person standing behind the shield is directed away from the person in front of it. The lenses in this array are oriented so that the vertical strip of light reflected by the standing uh, standing or crouching subject becomes diffused when spread out horizontally on passing through the back of the shield. It's In contrast, the strip of light reflected from the background is much wider, so when it passes through the back of the shield, Far more of it is refracted both across the shield and towards the observer. From the observer's per- perspective, this background light is effectively smeared horizontally across the front face of the shield over the area where the subject would ordinarily be seen. According to the team, the shields are most effective against uniform backgrounds, including grass, foliage, sand, and sky. Backgrounds with defined horizontal lines work extremely well, too. And these can be natural features such as the horizon or man-made features like walls, rails, or painted lines. Mm. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I'm going to see real quick if I can uh, bring that article up. You can't tell me that that is not alien technology. (laughs) (laughs) Cloaking device. Keisha found one that was May 10th, 1994, annual solar eclipse. That's the only one that went over our portion of the U.S. in the 90s. So, yeah, I would have been 13. So, yeah, that makes sense. May 10th seems a little early to be in the pool, but, you know, we probably were. (laughs) Mega Shield sounds like a superhero. Okay, I got the... I got uh, an article. It's not the exact same article, but I got an article up there um, so people can check it out. I mean, it actually works really well. Um, And there's video of it too. So, you know, pictures, I feel like the video is a little bit more realistic in terms of, but yeah, like it kind of blurs. Like you can tell that something is being, Mm -hmm. because you can see the the plastic shield, but you can't see what's behind it. It's see-through, but there's nothing there. But it looks Mm -hmm. like it's diffused, like a diffused light. Yeah, so it's pretty interesting. <clears throat> All right. And that was the news. Yay. I see the picture. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. That's really yeah, that's, weird. That's interesting. Can you, like, here's a question. Does it always just, is, is it like always reflecting the light so it just always looks like a part of something else? What does it really look like? Oh, it, uh, it just looks like a clear piece of plastic. Oh, weird. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. From what I saw of it earlier, if I'm not mistaken, and like it shows them, there's like videos you can see of them moving it around and like, hmm. yeah, it's just like a little plastic shield that makes you invisible. Saran Ooh. wrap invisibility shield. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You're always going to the pool too early. <laughs> Yeah, I would beg and beg and beg just to get yeah. in the pool. And I'd be like, I'm not cold. I promise. It's fine. <laughs> My kid, as soon as it hits like 70 degrees, she's like, oh, it's so hot out here. I want to get in the water. <laughs> Child, it is March. It's not March anymore, but she was saying it in March. Yeah. Yeah. It well, funny. it takes a little while for that water to warm up, especially, you know, when you get all the fake all the fake springs that we've been getting here where it's mm-hmm. like, okay, spring is here. And then yes, today the wind was blowing like 50 miles an hour and it was gray yeah. and cold and rainy. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. I thought spring was here. What's going on? All right. So tonight I got to let, let the cat out. Hold on. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, we got uh, a little bit of a, of a different thing tonight. So we did not book. Um, We had some guests that were planning on booking tonight, but we weren't sure if we were going to be in town or not. So we left this date open to have, um, to be able to do something a little different. So 
First off tonight, we're going to have, uh, as you've already seen, we're going to have the wonderful Allison Priestess of Wonderland. I want to talk about the moon phases and the solar eclipse that's coming up on Monday. So we're going to talk about that tonight. And I actually get to talk to her for a change. Yeah, yeah. And so more, <laughs> a little more of an interview than an update. And then, um, and then after that, we're going to, um, we're going to talk to Jenny and talk a little bit. Uh, if you guys have questions for for her in chat, uh, we kind of have a, a place to have an open forum without having to get any readings done or to or have another Allison guest. Or Alison might stick or, around and we can just, you can ask us both yeah. questions. So there we go. So that's what we got going on tonight. So if you got questions, uh, highlight them, put them in chat, and we'll get going. But what do we have going on with the moon this month, Allison? And and what do we have going on? And what's going to be the effects of this eclipse we have coming up? Um. Well, this is a April's a really big month astrologically, and we have two significant events that people would argue are the biggest event of 2024. And one of them being the eclipse, uh, which is kind of surprising how sensational it is. Yeah. Like, wow. Um, and then later this month, Jupiter and Uranus are forming a conjunction, which means they're just hanging out together. And the way we look at this ast- astrologically is that they're so close together that it's like they're forming a whole new planet with a whole new energy and um it happens every now and then a great conjunction um yeah so lots lots of lots of things (laughs) happening this month um that are like being quoted as like the biggest thing that's going to happen in 2024 so it's all happening in one it's all happening in april wow yeah, like a lot of times it's like something's happening in January, something might happen in August, and something mm-hmm. might happen in December, but it's just like all happening right now. Wow. Um, I've already been feeling the Mercury retrograde that started on April 1st, and Mercury will be retrograde until the 25th. And Okay, that's not too bad. Well, that's like a whole <laughs> month. Says so much. Yeah. <laughs> so the much. person who hasn't been affected by anything. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I kind of was, but no, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I mean, we're only four days in, and yeah. I've had so many things happen technologically <laughs> go wrong. Yeah, that I'm just like, what are what are we in store for? Um, I don't that know was why. Jenny bring I... out her always look on the bright side of life from Monty Python yeah. song right there. <laughs> Always that was look wishful on thinking. Right side of life. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I I always have problems with technology, but this one seems to be like crazy. Um, and I don't know why people are affected differently by it. It's so weird. Um, so, anyways, April first, we're we're in the first week of April, April first through the seventh. So it's a last quarter moon, and we're supposed to be kind of winding things down last quarter is almost to the new moon so we're we want to slow down and decrease the the energy that we're using because the moon's energy is decreasing as well um but i don't know the week i've had so far is like i'm using more energy stressing out about the things that aren't working um for those of you that don't know mercury retrograde is when a planet is when a planet goes retrograde it appears from our perspective to be moving backwards mm-hmm. but it's actually just kind of like uh it's it's not moving backwards it just looks like it from our perspective so we kind of i don't really know how to describe it we kind of like our, does it have to do with the way that we're moving it is the way the that... way that we we are moving. I used to know this. <laughs> yeah. Um, it just appears from our perspective on Earth that it's going backwards. But really, it it's that like um, the analogy that is used sometimes is like, you know how when you're stopped next to a car, like you're both stopped at the stoplight and the other one moves forward mm-hmm. and like you kind of feel like you're going backwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that perspective thing. 
Um, so like you're not moving backwards, like you're standing still, but it just appears that you're moving backwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mercury is the planet of communication. So this tends to like just discombobulate communication and technology is so much a big part of our lives. I think that's why we recognize it more frequently now than 10 years ago. Nobody was talking about Mercury retrograde. Yeah, but, like, very true. Our whole lives depend on technology mm-hmm. and communication. So things just go haywire sometimes. Um Things go haywire when Mercury is not retrograde, but it just seems to be a nice excuse to like blame on things. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's the first week of April, and Mercury is going to be retrograde until the 25th. Um, So next week is the big eclipse. Uh, From the 8th through the 14th, the eclipse is happening on the 8th, and um, it's an eclipse in Aries. And Aries is generally a time to like be starting things, to be moving. It's a fire sign. And this is a planet or a sign of action and spring and, and movement and go and doing things. Um, but a new moon is about going within and being very introspective and resting and rejuvenating. So even without without an eclipse, an Aries new moon is going to be about uh, clearing out the clutter of your energetic system, letting go of things that you want to let go of, um, using that fire energy to like burn things away, like burn and transmute and transform. And having an eclipse just makes it I think it, I almost see an eclipse as like digging up all of that extra gunk that you need to get rid of. It just kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and mm. I know, it's going to be a very cool thing to see. It's ex- it's exciting that people who aren't interested in astrology or astronomy are are excited about it. Like everybody's yeah. excited about it, and I think that kind of proves a little bit that like it it affects us <laughs> yeah yeah i think it combines um, two different two different groups together though that are typically mm-hmm. apart which is the really science heavy people and the and the people who are really into spirituality the they share it people. they share that together you know <laughs> um well, that's interesting. i mean that's the thing like cern is supposed to turn on uh, on the eclipse and nasa's shooting rockets to investigate mm-hmm. it's like there is something to this. Like mm-hmm. we are connected to yeah, our, our yeah. universe. Um, so I agree with that. Yeah, that that's um, it does connect two different worlds. So you said that this could be a period of like looking within and kind of like doing a different thing. Could the eclipse coming up be a significant or a good excuse for while I slept till three o'clock in the afternoon today? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a time like it's darkness during the day. The so, time has finally been announced. <laughs> you 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 are excused from from sleeping. All right. Um oh, I mean like experiencing night during the day is literally bringing shadows to the surface. So mm-hmm. you 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 can receive like energetic downloads or uh, just an energetic reset, like you're saying, you think that that happens like once or twice a year, where your body just needs to catch up on all of that sleep that you lost when you were waking up. Like our bodies do need a reset, and our bodies yeah. are connected to the earth and what's going on around us. Um, you needed that last like hibernation, like the bear at Maymont. <laughs> yeah, yeah. their little hibernation nap before. Who knew like, when I saw the bear at Maymont that that's what Frosty was mm-hmm. doing. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um so um the next week the april 15th through the 21st that's the first quarter and and so while the new moon is an aries fiery moon and you want to take action on things it's more of like a internal action or like a planning action 
Whereas a first quarter moon is like, okay, now I'm going to do the thing. Like now I'm going to start moving. Um, and this week is also the same week that we're having the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. And so Jupiter and Uranus have both been in the sign of Taurus for a while. So they've basically just been kind of slowly coming into alignment. And then they're going to be holding hands and become one. They're like conjoining. And um, we've been feeling this momentum and we've been feeling this kind of build up globally because the outer planets that are further away from us have kind of like a, a larger, more global impact on us, but they're also things that develop over time. Like these are slow moving planets. Jupiter takes 18 years to go through a cycle. Uranus takes 84 years to go through a cycle. Wow. So these are kind of bigger picture things that we're gradually getting used to. And then on April 20th, when they're actually like so close together, they could be holding hands. This is when we're going to like feel it more potently, but it's been happening since last year. And they're going to stay both in that same sign of Taurus until um, June. Jupiter moves into Gemini in June. So, like, we've kind of been feeling and noticing globally that, like, there's a lot of social unrest. Taurus is the sign of, uh, ruled by Venus. It's comfy, cozy, earthy energy. Uh very earthy and grounded energy and people aren't feeling safe and they're not feeling comfortable and they're not feeling protected and jupiter wants everybody to jupiter is the planet of luck like people need to be supported and made to feel like they're safe and uranus is the planet of liberation and freedom and revolution so we're seeing these things kind of kicked up globally that like need need a helping hand to like mm -hmm. find some resolution, whether that is revolution or not. Um it's a really positive conjunction happening. Like it's it's meant to support everybody. Uranus is ruled by Aquarius, who is the new free thinker finding new ideas and ways of doing things and like helping us rebuild in a very positive way. Like Jupiter is like luck and expansion and growth. And it's a really beautiful, <laughs> beautiful yeah. connection that like, it, it feels like a connection of hope. Like we can make a change. We can do better. We can globally support each other. And this is um, something that, I'm imagining really hasn't happened because the the cycle is so long that this hasn't really happened during anyone's lifetime. Um, Jupiter and Uranus, I think, I think it's been 18 years. I think it okay. was. Um, so 2010, but a different sign. <laughs> it probably would have been. Um, it would have been in Aries. Then. So that's interesting. So in some ways we could have some, like some of these things that maybe could, could possibly have effects that need to kind of be studied from an astrological point of view, like, or, or do you, or do we think we have that figured out? Well, cert certainly, like if you looked back to what was happening around 2010, at that time, I mean, you can look back on lots of different astrological events, what was happening mm -hmm. historically and is similar to what's happening now, which were a lot of like revolutions. And um, like when the United States was uh, uh, getting <laughs> getting freed from from English rule. Um, were a lot around the time that Pluto, which just moved in January, when Pluto moved signs, because Pluto is the planet of transformation and like evolution. Hmm. Okay. So there was, it seems like they, like you can look back on historical events and compare astrological events, and 
it's it's pretty surprising in the same way that you can history repeats itself like you can see those patterns. Do you know if anybody's mm -hmm. written a book about that? There's got to be one, right? Um, on astrological events and historical events? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only ever see them come up when, like, something like when the Pluto, Pluto ship, Pluto moved into Aquarius earlier in January or February, and you can compare other times that Pluto has moved. I've only ever seen it like when when things occur. I've never seen anything like all together. This would be, I, I think, yeah. that we just came up with a a gigantic project Wait, for uh, you and to Frosty to do. Or something? <laughs> yeah. Frosty can do the historical <laughs> research, and you can figure out what the astrology was. Oh, Bam! God. Best seller. There we go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's pretty interesting because one of the things that it came is. to mind when you were going through all of that was. You know, there could be astrological phenomena that happens so far apart from each other that it hasn't been able, the effects of it really haven't been able to be studied. Like if it's only happened two or three times in the last few hundred years, like what are the chances mm. that, you know, we actually know what the full contributions of it are? Yeah. Mm. Hoaxer says they're going to be $600 a book, <laughs> 800 if you want to autograph. And Keisha said that uh, she told you there was some collaborations coming. Oh, she did. She did. She did. <laughs> I'd um, read it. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, that would actually kind of be pretty interesting. It's, research. Very, it's very validating mm -hmm. to look at the past because um, mm -hmm. you can't change it. It's fact. It happened. And same with the astrology of it. I don't know. We'll talk off air, Alice. We'll talk off air. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not that you guys don't already have enough stuff to yeah, do. Yeah, right. Let's give you another giant yeah, thing to do. <laughs> that's how I roll usually. And that's how I do too, and so does Frosty. That's just so. And then just to get through the the rest of April, um, we have our full moon the week of April twenty second through the twenty eighth. We've got a full moon in Scorpio, and Scorpio is Halloween time energy, so it kind of brings that shadowy aspect to spring. We always have this like new moon that is of the season, and then we always have a full moon that's the exact opposite energy of it. And with an eclipse that is also bringing up shadow, Scorpio is going to bring highlight shadow. It's and and the full moon also helps us like release things. So it's like all that stuff was dug up on the eclipse and Scorpio is going to cleanse it and wash it away. Scorpio is water. So that's cleansing and clearing energy. And mm -hmm. it's a regular moon. So we're done with eclipse season. Um, this eclipse season started with a Libra eclipse a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And and then we're ending it with the new moon solar eclipse. And now we just have a regular moon, regular full moon, but it's a Scorpio moon. So it can be a little bit spookier, too, because it's Scorpio and it likes to be weird. Oh, we're getting a raid. Oh, Beyond the shadows. Thank you for oh, the we've raid. We've been haunted. Speaking of Scorpio. <laughs> Speaking of, we were just talking about spooky stuff. And here comes some. There's a. Uh... Some uh, planchettes and some dancing grim reapers, <laughs> some ghosty. Spooky. Uh, You've been summoned. <laughs> <laughs> You've been haunted. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome in, in, everyone. Uh, Thank you for so much for coming checking us out. We are The Witching Hours, uh, a podcast uh, that we do every Thursday um, that basically deals with anything supernatural, paranormal are weird so welcome in welcome in uh tonight uh we don't have a typical week uh normally we would have someone uh, on to discuss a specific thing uh, uh once a month we have allison the priestess of wonderland come on and talk about uh, moon phases and astrology and so tonight we're de delving a little bit deeper into that with the eclipse coming up on on monday and uh we our co-host the medium jenny lee we're gonna 
uh, talk to her tonight some and just kind of have a night to be able to talk about uh, mediumship stuff and, and channeling and, and kind of uh, just general questions for, uh, for a, a psychic medium. So a little bit more of a hangout stream tonight than normal for us. Yeah. But, uh, so welcome in. It's a good night to be able to come in and hang out with us. So welcome in and thank you so much for the raid. What were, uh, what were you up to tonight beyond the shadows? So Allison, I don't, but I don't, but I don't like all the digging up the shadow stuff for the whole month. Okay, why? Well, I have one. I have one more thing to say. Okay, good. So we, the week of the twenty second through the twenty eighth, we've got our full moon Scorpio dealing with shadows, and then the last week is only the twenty ninth through the thirtieth. But then we have Beltane, and Beltane on May first is. All about just having fun, frolicking in the fields, and yeah, dancing naked around fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we just gotta, we just gotta <laughs> tread through the month, We're digging up all of the stuff that we don't want to have to look at, and then having to look at it, and then we can burn it down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, the good thing about an Aries eclipse is Aries is fire. So you mm -hmm. dig up all the crap and you let it go. Mm -hmm. You burn it. You literally yeah. burn it. Yeah. Transmute yeah. it. Right. Like rise from the ashes, burn everything down, compost it. Like Aries is fire and it wants to burn through stuff. And it does. Yeah. And then Scorpio is water. So wash it away cleanse it away i kind of i mean it depends on how you feel but like last year we had taurus eclipses and i feel i don't like the earth energy just feels like you got to carry all of that stuff uh, that yeah that's like, true Ugh. but like fire just burn it <laughs> yeah. i feel like we've been getting some false starts here lately too for spring like i keep getting kind Ooh. of that spring momentum and then it like dies and then it's like it comes again and it's been nice because i keep getting that spring fever kind of feeling but it's like i don't know i feel like it's been arrested to a certain degree oh well it's funny that you say that mars doesn't move into aries until april 30th so mars is that movement planet of action so mm. you can hibernate you can take your bear nap <laughs> all through the month of april and then april 30th you just got to be like "Woo, i'm ready to go yay yeah. good time <laughs> Sam C said Mercury Excellent. retrograde isn't all bad. It's a great time for creativity and arts. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, is digging good. up your shadows. Like, yeah, dig up that shadow and put it onto a canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or sing it in a song or write yeah. it in a journal or. Yeah. Anything. Okay. All right. <laughs> if you say so. It's going to be okay, Jenny. Yeah. Actually, I have a I have a journal that I had filled up when I was going through like therapy and we had talked about when I was done with it that I should read through it one time and then burn it. Mm -hmm. And I still haven't done that yet. So Ooh. maybe this will be a great time to actually do that. Yeah. Yeah. It feels good to burn stuff. It does. Safely. Safely. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Let's not burn anything down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. We have a question. Mercury great Mercury retrograde is most is mostly a communication time, isn't it? Hence why it tends to feel so chaotic. Well, I I was saying that earlier because Mercury is the planet of communication. And technology equals communication. And so much of our society revolves around technology now. I mean, mm -hmm. if there were times when my back in the beginning days of an iPhone, uh, I had one of the crappiest versions ever, and it would just die on me all the time. And I couldn't do anything. I couldn't contact clients. I couldn't call my the people I needed help with because I didn't have their, I didn't know their number anymore. And I couldn't access my calendar or my day book or like, there's so we rely on it. Like, can you mm -hmm. like, 
Yeah. Who, who goes throughout their day without using technology? My whole schedule for the everything is in yeah. the phone. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, yeah, we use our phones for fun, but most of it is most of us live on it, like or yeah. work on it. Uh huh. Um, so yeah, planet uh, Mercury is the planet of communication, but and as people, as humans, we already have difficulty communicating face to face, one on one. <laughs> Anyways, so to be forced to out of your comfort zone, I can't text somebody. I gotta actually like go walk over to their cubicle and <laughs> yeah, talk to them. Yeah, <laughs> like heaven forbid. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's detrimental too, like. Just in the fact of, I guess it's beneficial because you don't have to remember all the things you used to have to remember, but mm -hmm. I don't know anybody's phone number anymore. And I used to have like a whole Rolodex memorized in, in my your head. head. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't even know how that was possible now. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I knew everybody's phone number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't got to remember it anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. I don't. I don't even know, like, I don't even know, like, my kids' phone numbers. I have them saved in my phone. So if, like, yeah, if I was like, yeah, I mean, it's that bad. Whereas, like, I used to have everybody's number memorized. Now we just store it, set it, and forget it. Right? <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> so oh, uh, write it down on a post-it and stick it to the fridge. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. That kind of made me almost panic. Like I need to go through and like <laughs> get my old address book out, and start writing it down. Like, oh shit, if my phone dies. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I I actually still have an address book, like a handwritten one, and it's like all crossed out. Yeah. Because uh -huh. people have moved and mm -hmm. and relocate, and it's like everybody has three or four addresses, and I'm like, which one is the right address? <laughs> I think we still yes. have our address book too, and it's used exclusively for Christmas card season. Yes. It yeah, comes that's out like cards. <laughs> it's like Once one a time a year. <laughs> and if I need it any other time of the year, good Lord, yeah. I have to be searching for it and the Christmas stuff. I should just keep it out. <laughs> yeah, that's what we found out last year. Right? We were like, where is it? And it was like in with the Christmas mm -hmm. stuff. It's like, that's, that's, what, the that's the only purpose for it now. Yeah. You want to know why I revert back to the address book is because for whatever reason, the Christmas card file on the computer is not accurate. It has old <laughs> address, and I'm like, why is the handwritten one more accurate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hoaxers, All we'll right. let you write the, write the phone numbers on your forehead first. You go for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. So let's talk more about the solar eclipse. We talked about it a bit at the beginning, but so. Yeah, like the one thing I was curious about is overall, are we looking at a pause? Because I feel like the eclipse can be some people look at it from like a magical perspective. Some of it mm -hmm. look, look at it from just a merely scientific perspective. And then also the eclipse has been like a harbinger of misfortune in the past for some groups as well so like what can we expect from the eclipse in terms of the energy that's going to come from it i think it has i lean more towards the magical aspect of it and i think it has the potential for us to like awaken as a society and um, for individually, for us to just kind of take time to meditate and reflect and um, be open to downloads, if that's something that you believe in. Mm -hmm. um, but I do also think that it has the potential, like when you get masses of amounts of people in one location around something that's already fear-based to be chaotic. Um, I imagine being like traveling to one of the places on the path of totality as being like going to a four minute concert with 8 million people yeah. and you're all leaving at the same time. You're leaving that parking lot and it's just like that, so, that could be chaotic and traumatic. Yeah. But I guess there also could be a big opportunity for a connectedness. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can get that at a concert. You know, that's one of those things Mm -hmm. you get from a concert Mm -hmm. that somebody who hasn't been to maybe a lot of them before can get, but there can be real moments where there's like 10,000 people that are all sharing like in this one kind of emotion. And you really do kind of get a sense that it's creating, it's almost, it's almost autonomous, you know, like Mm -hmm. the, the spirit of it is. Um, so I imagine that's something that could happen with this solar eclipse as well. Absolutely. Um, we watched, um, live on stream, one of the NASA coverages of the, uh, solar eclipse in the fall of last year. And even the news anchors who are your traditional news anchor, that's sensationalizing anything that ever happened (laughs) just so that you watch it and they're all made up and they have this smile Mm -hmm. on their face and they're feeling emotional and having this response to something that you can't really explain and it's like the most normal person you can imagine reacting to something spiritual or metaphysical or Mm -hmm. astronomical From my perspective, I've seen a lot of negativity towards it, mostly because it's been dealing with that with schools, Mm -hmm. Um, people who are upset because the schools are getting out. Um, Uh, And so it's like, oh, well, but so a lot of people have been irritated and I'll see comments on social media that are like effectively talking about like, oh, you know, this is stupid that uh, that 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 kids are getting out and they you know there's no reason for them to go home early and things like that however i think a lot of that is rooted in the fact not blaming the people who are saying those things i think a lot of it is rooted in the idea that really there's just um they're disappointed maybe that they can't go home early that it's not something that they are um have thought about participating in it it almost kind of feels like that to a certain degree like Almost like maybe there's, they're actually guarded against the idea that they're missing out on something that everyone else wants to participate in. Yeah. There's been a little bit of that, I think. I would bet (laughs) that the schools are closing because they can't be liable for somebody who's like medium Jenny Lee in 1994, looking up at the sun without their glasses on. Letting the light get magnified by the pool. Just burning those retinas off. my fault. (laughs) <laughs> oh, my fault. and and you ruined my daughter or son's eyesight yeah yeah no, that was my dumbassery <laughs> and i'm sure like maybe the schools are worried about being sued my my take on it was this it's happening at a weird time if it was happening at noon uh where i'm at i could uh especially since we aren't in the path of totality i could see 100 percent like hey let's get a bunch of classes and pass them out to students and we'll all go outside and we'll make it a learning experience my like different science teachers like you know like talk about what's going on or you know have like some kind of assignment attached to it but for us it's happening at 3 15 is going to be like the pinnacle of it mm-hmm. and so at that point in time students are already on the buses going home so yeah. are you guys getting out early well, or... well, we actually, they've decided that we're, we're, we don't have school that day. Oh, well, for you. They just made that decision. But the, the problem I think was, is like, if you're going to have students go to school, then it's happening basically at dismissal. Mm-hmm. Even the people who say they don't care about the eclipse are going to be riding home. And then all of a sudden it's going to look like it's eight o'clock at night, you know, mm-hmm. just like the sun is setting. And they're going to be like, what's going on? And they're going to start looking around. <laughs> And there's going to be lots of distracted driving, even more mm-hmm. than there already is, which is an astounding amount. Mm-hmm. So to me, I felt like from the get go, like just because it's happening, essentially, like when rush hour kind of starts, mm-hmm. it was probably a good idea because I don't think people realize like, because I think that happened to me last time. I think last time this happened, I was like, oh, it's cool, but it's not like a total eclipse. So it's not like really a big deal. And then mm-hmm. when it happened, it was like, oh, wow, this is kind of a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> but I realized it like by myself in my yard, you know, like as it was happening, I was like, oh, this is really cool. And I think that will hit a lot of people who are driving home and they're just like, yeah. oh, wow, this is cool. And the next thing you know, they're like looking out their windshield and turning around and now there's a fender bender or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
I think that's a real oh, opportunity. You, you had a moment tying on the frost by yourself in your backyard. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, because I think I was at home possibly by myself. I can't remember exactly, but I remember it getting like twilight. I wasn't expecting the, all of that. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, I was kind of like, oh, this, yeah, this is kind of magical. And I hadn't been, I hadn't had that much anticipation for it because it wasn't, we weren't in the total eclipse thing. So I was like, oh, well, you know, it'll be whatever it is. And it ended up being really cool anyway. So now I kind of am ready for it on Monday. Cause yeah. I'm, you know, even though we're not in total path, that's like, yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be something to look at. And I don't think mm -hmm. a lot of people realize that just mm -hmm. uh, the everyday person who's not into astrology, who isn't really into science and keeping up with all that stuff. They're just kind of going about their day. I don't know. I think that some of them are going to be kind of caught off guard mm -hmm. by what's going to happen. That's just kind of my thoughts on that. But. It's very surreal. Uh -huh. um, I'm, I'm not on the path of totality either, and I wasn't for the 2017 one, but it was just, er, everything looked different. Like, a, uh -huh. it felt like yeah. you were on a different planet. Like, it, mm -hmm. it looked like, it felt like I was wearing sunglasses without wearing sunglasses. There's yes. this amber, like, sepia tone to everything. And, I mean, it felt like I was on Mars. Yeah, it was just so weird. dreamland or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It kind of caught me off guard. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder. I wasn't if... expecting that either. I don't know why, or mm -hmm. but I, like, I had a set of glasses, or I have two sets of glasses, and I drove up to my husband's work, and I made everybody in the shop. Um, he works in, uh, uh, like an automotive shop, and I was like, "Hey, everybody, come outside!" And I had two two glasses i brought a cooler of popsicles and no everybody was like what what are we doing what is your crazy hippie woo -woo wife do? and we just passed around the glasses and ate popsicles because it was in it was in august it was like august 21st i think it was like right before our birthday um and they certainly weren't interested but they were all like whoa this is it was crazy. august 21st because i just found my pictures of it mm. yep yeah and I don't know, just like experience it. Try, try to experience it if you can. It's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Whether you believe in woo-woo stuff or not. Yeah, I got definitely... like three pictures of it that year. Yeah, and CMC said everything got quiet in 2017 during mm -hmm. the eclipse as well. And that was kind of eerie. Yeah, there was something different about it. I, I, and I was kind of went into it with the mind frame of like, yeah, like I said before, it wasn't going. We weren't in the total eclipse, so I didn't know if it was going to be a big deal or not. And then when it happened, I realized that it kind of was mm -hmm. in the in the moment. So I think other people are going to have that experience, and it's probably better for them not to be on the road when that's happening. Um, mm -hmm. Which is what hoaxers are saying. There are actually signs that say "Don't drive on the highway while an eclipse is happening." Oh wow! Um, which I think you are going to be closer to totality, aren't you, hoaxers? Um, so yeah, that, you know, yeah. Yeah, Luna, remember I was saying me, you and Pri Priestess Wonderland all have the same birthday. Yeah. We're now, I, we, it was just us birthday twins and now, now we're birthday, birthday triplets. triplets. <laughs> <laughs> birthday triplets. <laughs> I just put up my eclipse pictures from 2017 in the Witch and Iris chat. Ooh, let's see. All the summer babies. I always tend yeah. to I always tend oh, to find wow. more people born in the summer than the winter. It seems like it seems like there's a lot of summer babies for some reason. I would always be surrounded by there would always be like other Gemini's around me when I was growing up. That would always happen a lot too. I happen to That's be friends, a lot of Gemini's. I used to have That's a good. lot of people whose birthday would be just just before mine or just after mine, like very very close together. What were you going to say, Allison? Nobody wants to do it after Beltane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Hoaxers and Keisha are birthday twins. Have you guys ever noticed? Um, so Scorpio babies are Valentine's Day conceived. Oh. And um, I always think about that. Like, <laughs> so my, my parents had Christmas sex. <laughs> <laughs> I guess mine did too then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Liz said it, Lunas. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. That's how we all got here. All them holidays. Mm. All the holidays or <laughs> the good weather. It's very true if you think about it. Think nine months before you were born. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yours were immaculately, you were immaculately conceived, so you don't have to think about it. <laughs> all right. If you have uh, questions or. For uh, for priestess or for Jenny, uh, highlight and put it in chat. Um, pretty much um, anything we talk about that maybe we don't get a chance to because of uh, readings or um, uh, because we have another guest on or something like that. Feel free to throw that in there. We kind of have an open lines night tonight. Uh, west yeah. of the Rockies, east of the Rockies. Uh, feel free to uh, put. Uh, we can kind of talk about whatever you want to talk about tonight. <laughs> and answer any questions that you have tonight um so feel free to put those in chat kind of going over what we have going on with the show uh with the witching hours uh next week we're going to have alex mitsuo on so we're going to be talking about haunted hospitals is going to be one Yay. of the things a paranormal investigator and author um specifically i know uh, one of the books that we were discussing with her was specifically about haunted hospitals so that's something we're going to discuss about uh, on the 18th, we have Robert Biddo coming back on, uh, which I Yay. showed you guys. We just got a copy of his book the other day that he sent us. Mexican so. Miracles. Yeah, we're going to be talking more about uh, Mexico Unexplained. And actually, um, I bought one of Alex's books uh, when we met her at the Hanover Tavern Paracon, and she has written a book about female paranormal investigators, I believe. Yeah. It's like the history of female of women who worked in, in the paranormal you know, paranormal mm -hmm. because didn't wasn't she part of the uh of the lecture we saw there yeah, she was yeah and that's what she was talking about yeah, yeah. so yeah mm -hmm. we, we saw some of the lecture about women in the paranormal which would be a great topic uh, to get into also uh another group we met at that uh at the hanover tavern paracon was haunts of richmond they're going to be coming on the 25th so we're going to talk about some of the haunted places they've been to and Maybe, you know, just kind of talk about like, you know, if you're going to go set up and go check out some, do some paranormal investigating in Richmond where some of the best places to go, what they've had happen yeah. personally. So that's mm -hmm. going to, that's going to be great. He was, um, I think we're going to have uh, the person we met that night and his wife on, if I'm not mistaken. And um, that, uh, that evening we were with him uh, kind of leading the group and he, uh, I was pretty interested in having him on because he, he was pretty calm, cool and collected and, and seemed to really kind of have to be a, a seasoned pro <laughs> in Maybe his can, uh, so. give us the hookup on some places to record weird hunt. Uh, yeah, that's true. Weird too. hauntings. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're going to be in our way to May and on May 2nd, we're going to have Mark Hunter Brooks back on. And I think this is going to be the fourth time. Fourth time. What we were saying, we need to come up with some kind of uh, four timers. Oh yeah, we're, I was um, saying, Al maybe Allison can make a button. Oh yeah, four timers club. <laughs> <laughs> you can make one for yourself too, Allison. I was thinking like a tinfoil <laughs> hat or something, but um, tin yeah. Foil hat. Here it is, Women of the Paranormal, Volume One: A Brief History. Oh, cool, Alex Matsu. I haven't read it yet, but yeah. So it's like the the w historical women who worked in the paranormal. And she signed it to me. She says, may the spirits of these women guide you. Nice. I think that's been the biggest benefit of doing the witching hour so far is now we get signed books instead of just regular books. <laughs> yeah, we have quite a few signed books. <laughs> Our book autographs are, are, are increasing <laughs> in number at an exponential rate. Yes. So, <clears throat> you know, don't hate us. Because you ain't us, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Um, there was some. There was a question here. Yeah, Jerry we got a couple. has two questions. Yeah. The first one is, why isn't our conception date not considered our birth date? Because technically that's when we came out of the womb. Aren't we eight to ten months old? 
that is a slippery slope of very mm. uh, ca- uh, controversial yeah. discussions, journey of self discovery. Yeah, the idea <laughs> of like when do humans I don't know, become does, human? Does your soul enter the body at conception, or does it enter the body at birth? At birth. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, it's it's a hot topic of controversialness. Mm -hmm. Um, because as a person who has had three children and read the what to expect when you're expecting three different times, um, (laughs) your little tiny baby has a heartbeat before you'd even know that you're pregnant. So Mm -hmm. what does that mean? Um, And then I have recently at some point listened to one of those qhht uh segments it was probably from suzanne spooner but i have been listening to the sarah breskin cosme ones too and there was a situation with a lady who had a lot of traumatic experiences that she was having to work through in that session from when she was in the womb Mm. of Mm. things that had happened to the mother or things that the mother was experiencing and because the mother was experiencing them she experienced them as well so i don't know what the answer to that is journey of self-discovery all right before we get into the next question well hold on let allison answer go ahead I I wonder if being in the womb is a kind of in between moment. Just like I I also have a theory that when you're nearing your death that you're kind of in between the worlds. Like you're kind of being able to go in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I never thought about that for the birth the womb part. That might very well be true. We don't know. Yeah, there's lots of questions that could be brought up with that. Um, I think it's interesting to, to think about. I don't know. I don't know if we have an answer, though. But real quick, I know everyone here is pretty familiar with who we have on the show tonight, but uh, we do put this out in podcast form. And so some people might not know the background. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit. You know, we talked about having Allison on tonight. And of course, uh, she streams on Twitch. Most people in our chat here have gone over there. But if you don't, make sure you follow Priestess of Wonderland to get all kinds of uh, wonderful uh, uh, conversations about spirituality, tarot reading, astrology, the moon phases, and all of those things, as well as I'll make sure, Allison, to put up your um, link for uh, the moon phase planner. Uh, Definitely something you might want to check out if you've been enjoying the conversation tonight. Um, And then our co-host, who we're going to be, I guess, asking some questions to tonight is the medium, Ginny Lee who is an empath, psychic, medium, and channeler. She has experienced the unusual her entire life. Over the past five years, she has been honing her skills with the paranormal, supernatural, and otherworldly. She has studied with Jane Marie, Cindy Keza, and Paul Jacobs. On the top of typical tarot reading and evidential mediumship, Jenny also connects with spirit guides, higher selves, angels, higher dimensional energies, past lives, and ETs. She is the co-host of some show called The Witching Hours, <laughs> and she is also an artist and art educator with a BFA in art education, and which has led her to doing spirit art, which we've talked about quite a bit in these realms. So, all right, Jenny, are you ready to uh, get into some I'd, conversations tonight? I didn't know that you were going to read my bio. Oh, we said we we're going to have you on the show tonight, right? I was just reading chat, and then all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Well, there's some people uh, who could be listening gonna... to the podcast who don't know who you are. They just know you're the co-host of the. That's true. The Witching hours. Because I don't. When we have guests, I don't really talk mm-hmm. too much about my own experiences. I, I try to let the guests tell their experiences. You know. I mean, sometimes you guys share stories, but I think if there's someone who doesn't watch us on Twitch who's just listens to the podcast, they That's might not true. know your background. Yes. Or they might know that you're a medium, but they don't know what you do. Like, mm-hmm. like many of the wonderful people in, in chat know what you do mm-hmm. on, on Friday nights and stuff. But anyway. Thanks, Journey of Discovery. Journey of Discovery. It's nice to meet you, too. <laughs> um, As a wise man once said, if you don't know, now you know. Right. Okay. So Journey of Self-Discovery had another question. Yeah. And I think this question can be answered by myself and Priestess of Wonderland. Yes. What made you decide to begin streaming 
well, for me, mediumship, but we could also ask the same question of mm-hmm. Allison. What, for sure. What made you start streaming? Why did I start streaming mediumship was um, I had, I'm an extra medium. <laughs> I had uh, been being yelled at on a daily basis. Of course, now we know by Louise, but then I didn't really know what was happening. Like, you need to be using, you, you need to be doing something with this. You need to be doing something with this. You need to be doing something with this. You know, talking about my, my psychic abilities or whatever, like all the time. Like I kept hearing it over and over again. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with it. Um, but then I saw, it was a lady. Um, she is, I'm trying to remember what she calls herself. And I think she's actually friends with Sam, who was supposed to be on our, the guy who, whose apartment burned, you know? Yeah, Sam um, Baltrusis. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. uh, she's so friends with him. One. Yeah. He, uh, so she was, I saw her on Instagram and she's a medium. And I think she calls herself like the uh, psychic housewife of New Jersey or something. I can't remember the exact words, but I started watching her stream media, like readings on medium readings on Instagram. And I was like, oh, like you can actually do that. You know, (laughs) it doesn't have to be like in person. Mm -hmm. So then um, I started on Instagram first and then I like eased into doing it on Twitch. And I was doing like one week I was doing Instagram, one week I was doing Twitch. And then Twitch started getting big enough to where I just let the Instagram go. And I was just doing it once a week uh, on Fridays and, and it was working and the readings were like really happening, you know, because like there's this question of like, is this going to work with me just being able to see somebody's screen name? And it absolutely did. Yeah. And here we are, like how many? Yeah, we found the, found the tarot community over on Twitch and yeah, we'll go from there. So, Allison, what made you start streaming on Twitch? Um, I kind of, I think a lot of the same that you were feeling, like this, like you felt like you were being yelled at, like you have to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess it started for me in 2020. Um, I had to shut my business down during the shutdown. And uh, in North Carolina, we had like phases. You were phase one, phase two, or phase three. And massage therapy was phase two, which meant like, I think in phase one was like restaurants could open. Mm -hmm. And so I was not working for most of 2020. And I was just like, like, what do I, who am I? What am I doing? Like, Mm -hmm. and, and how can I move my business online? Um, And a lot of that wanted to be creative stuff i was like oh i have all this time to like make art now and but then i was also trying to get my current clients interested in energy healing because a lot a lot of my clients are like physical touch massage yeah it's good but they don't take it to a spiritual level and i was trying to introduce that to them in hopes that like i could bridge this gap of physical and virtual business um and i actually started streaming on youtube first of all Mm. um so you were live streaming on youtube at first Mm -hmm. how did that go i remember one time you said it was the wild west over there (laughs) i don't i don't like you streaming on youtube um it 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 feels like this grand open stadium whereas Twitch feels like we're just hanging out in a room Mm -hmm. and having a conversation. And it it just made me feel uncomfortable. Um, But originally I started streaming on YouTube uh, about just energy and clearing your home because I was seeing a lot of people like kind of going frantic being stuck at home. And like, Mm -hmm. I don't like my space. I don't like, I don't want to be there. I don't feel comfortable. And I'm just like, I want to be at home. Like my home too. Is my sanctuary. <laughs> Man, that was an excellent time for us introverts. <laughs> and so I'm I started... not even really an introvert. And I still <laughs> felt like my dreams were like in a, in, a, in a twisted way, like my dreams were coming true of like. <laughs> I don't just, have to go anywhere. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and I think the I think we were divided pretty big. There was like people who just like could not deal with that, mm-hmm. which I get. Like I'm not knocking it at all. Yeah. Like yeah. And yeah. then there were people who were just like, oh my god, I've been waiting for this my whole life. Yep, mm-hmm. that was me. <laughs> yeah 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 so i just started talking about like uh clearing energetically clearing your space uh working with crystals um setting up crystal grids and sending healing out to the world i don't know i just and and the tarot thing i don't even really know how that that started it just happened (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah it was mostly like what you say jenny just like this you got to do something like yeah so, yeah, mm-hmm. I never was... actually bridged those worlds of my physical massage clients are like, you're just silly and woo woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, mm-hmm. um, I wanted to blend them, but they're still kind of separate things right now. Like we had talked yeah. about this before, but like that was one of the things like during this happened, like right before COVID, like COVID basically happened right when I started streaming. So I was streaming before COVID, but not long before. And like, um, we had, um, like Fumbi and Little Wing, like during our, during that time, we were getting one and streaming on, on my Giant of the Frost channel. Mm -hmm. And we were like on Friday and Saturday night, we were playing like Red Dead Redemption 2 together. And we were Mm -hmm. playing like some stuff like that. And then the lockdown happened. And so then we just had more time to play games. So then I was like streaming quite a bit. Uh, no one was watching really. Um, we made one we friend couple, yeah <laughs> and um but like we were streaming i was always streaming all the time and uh yeah. we were just playing like games but it was together so much online. fun see and i miss those i miss I those too. red dead redemption days we played so many different games too it was kind of fun mm-hmm. just like kind of going through even we, your dad got on there and played with us quite a few bill was games. on there Articles playing games bill, with us. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he was on there playing uh all kinds of games with us we were doing like D- dungeons and dragons online and yeah we did all kinds of stuff and um mm-hmm. and then that's when you were and then i was kind of like uh i don't know like we're you know like i don't know if this is working out or not and i really i think i was just interested in it to see if i could make it work like how, like what do they do like how do you make this happen how do you get the green screen to work all those kinds of things so really if it wasn't for mm-hmm. frosty streaming video games for like a year mm-hmm. we would have never known how to do any of this for me mm-hmm. yeah yeah because then i knew how to Hoax- set everything up for you already yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hoaxers yes uh, mikey moto was our friend from giant of the frost video game days and every once in a while you will see him pop in to one yeah. of our streams to say hello he is Aww. the og yeah. og yes <laughs> mikey moto yeah and i still always say i want to go play something with him again i just haven't i know he was to fun to play with. with he was the best to play he was good at games red dead with because yeah. yeah he like when you're playing that the the multiplayer with all the other people in it he was like the best at like when somebody was messing with you, he would just go after them and you didn't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, he was our he was our uh, what do you call they it? They were like goners. Our, our quick shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like between me and him and the wanderer, we could we could handle ourselves on there. But without mm-hmm. Mikey Moto, we would have been uh, bullied yeah. a lot more, probably. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Linguist wanted to know, how do we charge our crystals? Oh, I'm going to let you take that one first, Allison. Oh, or should... How do you charge your crystals? Oh, how do you charge your crystals? Like, how do you personally charge Oh, them? me personally? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I put them outside along um, the railing on my porch. And I have a, a rolly suitcase that I travel with that has all my crystals for massage in. And I just roll it outside and open it up and uh, let them charge. Um, you can put them in windowsills and stuff. Um, you don't have to take them outside if you're like in an apartment or something. I used to just put them all in my windowsill when I lived in an apartment. I have taken mine out a few times in the full moon, but mine do not get charged like uh, like that on a regular basis. Mm. I kind of feel like mine get charged from me using them. And as you guys know, I use them mm-hmm. every time I do readings. I'm using... Every time I do a medium reading, I'm using two stones. And like, so for the most part, all of my stones get used on a pretty regular basis. 
Um, but Linguist was saying, I feel like different crystals require either the sun or the moon or whatever. Mm. Have you well, had an experience where you feel like certain stones might need something different? Well, there is some controversy on whether or not you should bring, like if you're making moon water or charging your crystals, this can be used interchange interchangeably. There is this theory that you're supposed to bring it inside before sunrise so that it totally encapsulates just moon energy. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, I mean, with the hype online, people say like, oh, you're ruining it if you forget to bring it in at sunrise. Who the heck is waking up before sunrise to bring in their crystal? Not me, Allison. I, I can tell you that much right now. <laughs> it's for three o'clock in the afternoon. Shit ain't getting done. No. So, I mean, I don't go like that is the common mm. thing that is said is that you got to bring it in before sunrise. But OK, first of all, my argument is the sun is or the moon is literally the sun's light. sunlight. Yeah. So the only thing that's happening at sunrise is that you're getting like, for example, if you wanted to put your crystals out on this new moon, well, wait, that's not a good example. If you're putting, if you're making <laughs> full moon water, I was going to say it, the, it's an Aries new moon in Aries sun season. So you're getting double. Oh, yeah. If you had like a full moon and it was also mm -hmm. that season or something. Yeah. So if yeah. you wanted to get mm -hmm. some Scorpio charged crystals, you're getting Aries or no. <laughs> you're getting Taurus energy because the sun has, the sun moves into Taurus April 19th. So yeah. you're getting Taurus energy and you're getting Scorpio energy no matter what, because this moonlight is reflected sunlight. Um, yeah. So yeah. I don't yeah. I don't think it's a problem to like leave your water or crystals out before or and not getting it until you wake up at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. <laughs> or whatever. Or three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Mm. Journey Self Discovery says sometimes I clean the crystals by wiping them with a clean, damp cloth, rearrange them on the windowsill during the full moon. Um, and some crystals I bathe with, yet I'm interested in other ways to cleanse. Uh, you, speaking of crystals, since we're having this conversation right now, if you all did not know and you are not following Priestess Wonderland on YouTube, mm -hmm. whenever she was saying she don't like to stream on YouTube, but she's got a lot of YouTube content. <laughs> And she just released a Let's Get Stoned, which is not her smoking pot. It's her talking about stones. <laughs> and you just released one a couple of days ago. What was the stone that you were talking about in that video? Uh, Celestite. And, yes, I just finished watching it today. It usually takes me a couple of d times to get through a video because I can only listen to it like when I'm no one's talking to me in this house, which a small child home from spring break is like, you know, impossible. Um, so I just finished watching it today, your Celestite video. Oh, I uh, make so, very long. I have long content videos. Yes, this which is why it takes me a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there's also a difference between charging your crystals and cleansing your crystals. There you go. Tell charging, us about that. Charging them is like infusing them with that energy. If you like Aries energy and you're needing more fire in your life, charge your crystals in an Aries moon. Um, Cleansing them, you can use water, smoke cleansing, other crystals charge each other. For example, black kyanite can charge like any other crystal and does not need to be cleansed itself. Um, yeah, water, incense. Wasn't there like one specific stone that shouldn't go in water though? Like doesn't something bad happen um, to it? There's a, f there's a few that shouldn't, but you're probably thinking of selenite. Selenite, selenite. Very, like it'll just yes it always is yeah. crumbling to me anyway so don't put the selenite in water yeah even like um i i i have in one point in time putting them on my bathtub like just mm -hmm. on the side not in the water <laughs> but the humidity in the air can yeah integrate them too wow so um and there's other crystals that can't be put in water because of different uh, minerals that are in them that are toxic oh so look it up before yes before you're consuming it at least if you... get in the bathtub with them yes. <laughs> or, or journey of self-discovery be careful with them yeah. crystals 
<laughs> so there was another uh, question in here from CMC, yeah, CMC. too about um, whether it was good to a good time to charge your crystals during a solar eclipse. Um, that's another thing that is kind of controversial. People say no, uh, because it's chaotic energy and we're uh, digging up shadowy, difficult things to deal with. Um, however, I'm, I, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, there are instances where you might need some like extra, like oomph or punch, or if you're trying to, you're, if you're like feeling blocked in some sort of area and you're like, why, like, why can't I move forward with this? What is going on? I think eclipse energy can like punch it out, like <laughs> get it out in the open. Yeah. Um, so I think there are ways that you can use eclipse water, but most people will say like, I mean, there's so much hype on the internet. It'll say like, never, never, <laughs> never use eclipse energy. And it's like, yeah, you... <laughs> calm down I mean, people to a certain extent. <laughs> I mean, if you look at it from the perspective, perspective of someone who's a practitioner of of magic or or whatever you're trying to do it might be something that's worth experimenting with and seeing how it works for you and yeah. kind of learning mm -hmm. learning that lesson one way or another like i did that one time and this is what yeah. happened or you exactly. know you could kind of come across something that is beneficial for you and like the la the libra eclipse in october of last year on the actual day of the eclipse i was just like wow, I feel great. Like, I feel balanced. I feel aligned. I feel grounded. I like, I feel all lovey-dovey Libra Venus energy. And I'm like, man, I wish I had made some moon water last night. <laughs> but no, the internet tells you not to. <laughs> so, I mean, Aries might be too much for people. Yeah. Aries, Aries for me, I'm a Leo and I have uh -huh. a Mars in Leo. I've got lots of Sagittarius placements. Aries energy might be too much for me and too fiery. So I'm probably not going to make moon water on an Aries day, but for someone who's super earthy and very grounded and has trouble with moving forward with things, use some yeah. Aries eclipse water. <laughs> like, yeah, why it. not? We have well, another that, good question. Well, hold on. I, I, go ahead, Frosty. I, I have yeah. a question real quick, too, while, while we're still on the charging the crystals thing, which is... Yes. I know, well, I've been told that you're supposed to recharge the crystals uh, on a full moon using the moon energy, but knowing what I know about tarot and energy with the moon and energy from the sun, you would think that it would almost be better to charge them with the sun's energy because the moon is all about like shadow and like mm -hmm. maybe not really understanding everything. So wouldn't the sun in a way have a more positive charge to the crystals or am I mistaking something there? Um, I, I think you're totally on track with that. I think, um, like I was saying about like not bringing your, or bringing your moon water in before sunrise. I think like mm -hmm. the moon's light is the sunlight yeah. <laughs> in a aspect. So I think it's just, I like you that you had to clap that out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, like, what, I, the the moon doesn't have some well maybe it does have some like spaceship living inside of it that's yeah. illuminating it but we don't know <laughs> no but the moon's light is the sunlight so yeah it's it's all the same thing it's i think it's just whatever you feel drawn to or attracted to then you should do that i agree i think maybe just the sun's energy in general is probably better at like cleansing and like burning away illuminating and brightening uh more positive energy whereas the moon is emotional which i mean we can have good emotions or we can have negative emotions mm -hmm. but the sun typically is well i don't know that i mean the sun can burn you it can scorch you mm -hmm. it can be too much so it's like True. all about that balance especially if you're shooting rockets at it <laughs> All right, next question we have mm -hmm. was, um, how do we put up protective barriers around our homes? I can start with that one. Um, 
I do essentially like the bubble technique. Um, but I just heard Allison talking about the bubble technique in one of her videos recently about which I, I don't remember all the specifics. I'm pretty sure it was you. Um, but anyway, not to get off track here. Uh, I, I kind of do the bubble thing, but I guess mine's not necessarily like a bubble though, because I'm, I'm using my, my energy, my, my will, my power to kind of push the energy outward to create a protective area. Um, and I usually like, probably you would want to do it on a regular basis, but I kind of forget about it until I need it. <laughs> until something's like, you know, trying to get in here and I'm like, uh-uh, not yeah. happening. And well, then I, in the middle of the night, usually I'm like having to do it while I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. I will say, uh, just so people, just so people kind of know, like the way that you do your protection is also based off of your personality though, which, which is very like, um, when it comes to the spiritual, it's like F around and find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you're not very, um, like you get, you get pretty aggressive towards things that are trying to come in that you don't want in. Yes. And yes. so if you have that kind of personality, Mm -hmm. then you can kind of handle those things using your own energy because of the confidence really is what I believe. Like the confidence yeah. you have that you are yes. going to protect yourself is going mm -hmm. to protect yourself. Very true. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have maybe that much kind of fortitude in the decisions you're making, or you're kind of unsure of yourself and, and the abilities that you have at, at the moment, then there's mm -hmm. other things you can do too. Yeah. Um, so what do you do? That's just kind of my then? thought on it. Yeah. Um, I, I, for a space, I do use the bubble technique if I'm feeling like I need some extra oomph mm -hmm. to things, if I feel like something's coming in. Um, but I have found over the years and like Gina the Frost is saying, like, F around and find out. <laughs> um, I used to only exclusively use the bubble technique until mm -hmm. I realized that I was using my energy to do that's it. That's right. I just went right before you were saying it. I remembered you yeah. saying it. And oh. when, I think it was one of your weekly videos recently. And I was like, oh, yeah, I never really thought about that. Yeah. Like you're I, I noticed that like I'm like, why am I drained all the time? Why? Do, and and it's because I'm I'm constantly putting up these force, these bubbles or these shields. And that that takes a lot of energy to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I use crystals for protection all the time. I have all of my doors and windows have uh, a clear stone and a black stone. The clear for br bringing in the light and the black for um, clearing away the negative. And the reason I use the dark and the light together is because when we're clearing everything out, like if you go sage your entire house and you're like, oh, this house is totally empty, like the universe has to balance itself. So mm -hmm. when you have a totally mm -hmm. empty space, that's calling all the negative energies. Oh, hey, let's let's suck into this vortex. You have to fill it with something. So you have to fill it up with positive energy. So that's why I have the dark stones to clear everything out and the light stones to bring in positive light energy. And I do the same thing to clear my entire space. When I'm in my, after I clear my office, I stand in the middle of it and I say, I wanna fill this room up with productivity and creativity and uh, focus. And uh, when I'm clearing it out, I wanna get rid of procrastination. So in the living room, you want lovely, happy family times. And in the kitchen, you want to fill your space up with like healthy food and healthy meals. and food in general you want to have like all of your basic needs taken care of within your home so when you clear your space like fill it back up with positive energy yes. i've never cleared uh, or like done any boundary setting on like property lines i've always wanted to but mm. i haven't and there certainly is some 
weird energy on my property that I've kind of got them out of the house, but I haven't actually. <laughs> now they're just hanging out in the yard, yeah. Yeah. peeking in the window. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, Let us back in. <laughs> you know, talk, I've talked about this a little bit before, which is something I've always been really interested in when it comes to spirituality. Keisha, um, I just put up the thing on uh, on screen about a bowl of lemons. Um, and then, yeah, I uh, never heard the lemon thing we before. We were talking That's about cool. black tourmaline, and, we, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously salt is something that can be used to purify. I have but, used salt water before. Mm -hmm. I don't know if what you use actually matters or not. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, I think this is something that could be maybe blasphemous to a certain degree in the spirituality community, the spiritual community, <laughs> but I don't know if the properties of anything really matters. I think the only thing that really matter, matters is belief. your belief in the fact that it will work. Like, I think that's the whole point of ritual. Like in order for these things to work, you have to believe the, the, the prayer, the belief, all of that is what's essential to making magic happen. So if you used, you know, uh, black pepper instead of salt, I think it could work if you believe it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Especially if the ghost is uh, sneezy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a dwarf, and not a ghost. But Along the same lines, I also feel like the intent that you have when you are clearing your space energetically if you're thinking like oh i'm getting this nasty thing out of here and you start yeah. thinking about this negative energy you're also calling that in so if you're thinking positively like i'm clear like this space is filled with love and light and productivity and creativity mm -hmm. and um if you're thinking the whole time like oh i know there's something here where is it like what like mm -hmm. I, I think you're calling that in yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, you want to play? Let's play. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's the whole thing, you know. Uh, I mean, we're we're already running out of time, so, but but <laughs> I, I was like, um, we've talked about that with ghost investigations before, like um, the fact that a lot of times these entities that are at these places that people are constantly having interactions with only exist because people go there expecting to have intera interactions mm -hmm. with these mm -hmm. with these things and so people are creating ghosts just because they're feeding that energy so much mm -hmm. like zach um, baggins yeah <laughs> let's yeah. not talk about him <laughs> thank you for the subscription shadow max appreciate it we had a lot of followers tonight too so thank you for all Did the followers out oh, there yeah uh Tyler Heard Optic, Beyond the Shadows, uh, Hanster, um, Grim Hellhound. Thank you guys so much for the follows. We don't usually get, th that's what I'm saying. We try to make this one a little bit more interactive. I don't, I, I want to try to find ways to do that. I just, it's hard sometimes when we have on a guest who's here to talk about something. We have so much time to talk and then yeah. it's like, mm -hmm. um, they're not, especially a lot of our guests aren't used to Twitch. So they could yeah. be kind of off put if like every five minutes we're like breaking out the mm -hmm. conversation. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're like hosters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, some of them watch chat and then some of them are just yeah, staring at us on, on their on. screen. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, it makes it a little bit more, but yeah, thank you everyone. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the follows. Thank you for the subs. Uh, always appreciated. Always appreciated. I wanted to mention the date today is four yeah. four mm -hmm. and then yeah. there's two twos which if you add them together is a four and then that's a four so it's really like four 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 mm -hmm. four 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 two thousand and twenty four yeah but you take those two two because i'm look. i keep looking at it on my screen and i'm like it's four 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 <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah, and it's Thursday, which is the fourth day of the week. You're right. Mm -hmm. ah, we had this happen yesterday with threes on the stream. It was like threes just bombarded us for about 10 minutes. Now we're getting fours today. Right uh, as you said that, my Twitch stream froze. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? Um, Boom. We have another question that was uh, submitted by uh, Keisha earlier in Discord as well. 
with summer break essentially a month and a half to two months away, what are uh, the plans for all the channels and projects that you guys have going? Ooh, good question. That's Keisha. a good question for, for both of you. Have you thought about what you're going to do for the summer? Me? Mm hmm. I never get a break. <laughs> <laughs> but you always, always are. You're always planning out your seasons or your months for like what your activities are for Twitch and stuff. So have you thought about what you might do for summertime? No. <laughs> we gotta get have you thought about what you're gonna first. do mercury yeah. retrograde right now well, what, <laughs> what else i'm trying to make the spring schedule for a month now and it <laughs> hasn't happened i meant do to you I would have plans TBA. for the rest of the month what's your plans for the rest of the month um to get the spring schedule out i can't even <laughs> think about summer yet <laughs> Um, I, I know for sure that I would like to do a subathon again around my birthday because that was super fun last year. Mm. Uh, so I think I would like to have that as a regular thing. Um, cause like my Twitch anniversary is in February and then my birthday is in August. So it's like, it's exact, it's like exactly six months apart pretty much. So that's, that's like two big celebrations for, for the Twitch community a year. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I guess I might have something like that going on. I got, I got almost two months from today. Uh, well, from tomorrow, when I'll be going into my Gemini birthday season here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably do something on my stream for that. I don't know what day of the week does that fall on this year. That'd be a good question because your birthday. What, <laughs> we got so much going on that it's your birthday. Uh, oh, it's on a Wednesday. It's on. Oh yeah, I was looking at May. Yeah. When's Wednesday, your June, June 5th. 5th. June 5th. I think that's my aunt's birthday. Mm -hmm. So we got our witching hours the next night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe some something going on on the Monday stream. I'll do. Yeah, you could do something on the Monday mm -hmm. stream. Mm -hmm. So your dad yeah, might Keisha. be here that week. I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah th I think Barnacle Bill's coming down for a visit, so I might be busy that week. Yeah. We'll do something around that time, though. We'll get something figured out for that. Oh, Keisha's mom's birthday's on the 6th. And Hoser's, I was on the 5th of, Ju of July. I was about to say, good Lord. <laughs> That's still fit, the 5th. That's interesting. Isn't so what, what else do you have? On the 5th of July. Hmm. What else do you have planned coming up, Jenny? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't, uh, I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing with Allison. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, Keisha. I, <laughs> she ain't doing nothing. nothing. It's just, uh, right. and I'm sleeping in until three right in the afternoon, so don't expect so anything from me. He definitely ain't doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would like to have, um, another movie night soon. Mm hmm uh because that was fun last time <laughs> so i would like to plan out another movie night that was fun yeah um we have uh we have some stuff we want to do this summer keisha we we are planning on going to uh sage paracon in may we're looking at possibly going to another paracon at in gettysburg in july uh, Jenny wants to do some more of the uh, weird hauntings, so we'll probably be shooting some of those over the summer and getting some more weird hauntings out. Mm -hmm. And we're going to continue to, uh, you know, do our the witching hours thing. Um, we got next week. We got the um, the potion jar and or, or sorry, the spell yeah. jar and the potion stream. We're doing spell jar week. and potion stream oh, should be on fine. Tuesday. We ordered yeah. all the stuff and it should all be here. So. We're going to do the cup of luck potion and the, it was, uh, it's like an abundance, uh, spell jar. Yeah. Essentially abundance spell jar. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's exciting. Yeah. I, love spell jars. I had never done one. and didn't really understand what it was. So we bought a book about it. <laughs> you could charge it on the moon or the sun. Yeah. In the little book we bought it said there's a like a history of spell jars and they were they were once called witch bottles mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Ironically, I think witch bottles were used to get rid of get rid of witches. <laughs> it's like you're basically doing witchcraft to to get rid of witches. <laughs> well, I mean, that goes all the way back to the to the witch trials in Salem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they would mark their doors to keep like the witches out, but they're basically yeah. using magic to keep the. I never thought about that. Yeah. And the whole does is a, a you know does it float <laughs> does she float or does she sink uh-huh. you know is she heavier than a duck or whatever yeah, yeah. it's all witchcraft stuff <laughs> yeah um, it just depended on what side you were on yeah mm-hmm. and hymns or incantations mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Keisha mm-hmm. yeah yeah we got all yep. kinds of stuff going on, Keisha the weird hauntings witching hours bow streaming mm-hmm. tarot medium readings arts games Jenny's got more podcasts coming out that she's done with other yes podcasts. that is some that is stuff that's happening yeah we i guess i can share that stuff um since keisha's asking what we're doing let's see i got stuff coming up soon um on the 16th of april i'm doing an interview for transcendent minds podcast that is not a live one though, so I don't have to let you know when it comes out. And then on the tenth, good night, linguist. I will. Bye, linguist. On the tenth, I'm gonna be doing. Um, uh, what is it called? Typical skeptic. Typical skeptic podcast on the tenth which I think he does not record it live, but he tries to get it out the same night that it's recorded. So we're recording it at eight o'clock PM on the 10th. So it should be available like right after that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then I have another one, but I think that's not till May. Um, Yeah, May 6th, I'm recording one called Paranormal is the New Normal, which kind of fits with and with our weird is the new normal thing. Uh, (laughs) So uh, I don't think that that's live either, but all that stuff's coming up. And And I actually haven't haven't checked out your newest one, the Closer to Venus podcast, because I haven't listened to it yet. I haven't listened to it yet because I'm waiting for the YouTube video to come out because I want to watch it instead of just listening he to it. He hasn't said it's not that on it YouTube came yet. out on YouTube yet. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm kind of waiting for that. But if anyone else was curious in checking it out, the podcast itself is out. Yes, the podcast mm-hmm. is out on the podcast platforms. That's closer to Venus. But the video, the video YouTube video is not up yet. And then what's the other thing you have going on that you did like a collaboration? I did the collaboration with um, Nova YouTuber, but she's on Twitch too, but she doesn't really stream very much on Twitch. She's, but she's a huge YouTube person. Um, And we recorded a collaboration of me trying to psychically win a Yu-Gi-Oh game. (laughs) I'll say no more. So there you go. If that's yeah, VTuber, right? VTuber. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So when that comes out, we'll let you guys know. You can see if Jenny yeah. can rig the system with her psychic was abilities. Was I was I able to use my psychic abilities to win the the uh is it Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, I think it was. One more you were telling me about it. I have the cards right here. Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yeah, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Oh, so those are your, yours to keep now, huh? Yeah, they sent them to there me in the mail to, no, nice. to use for the video. Mm-hmm. So I have All a right. Yu-Gi-Oh deck. There you go. <laughs> that's a yeah. lot of stuff coming up. That's so awesome. Yeah, it is a lot. I and I just started my tr- my transmediumship class last night. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So there'll probably be lots of stuff coming out on that on the Friday night so, streams. You're not doing anything. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think Keisha was trying to get at that. We yeah. don't have time to do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> There's no time for nothing. 
I mean, I think because if we had more time at this point, I think at this point, if like there was more time, there would just be more weird hauntings. There would be more classes. There would be more witching hours. Like it was just, it's, I think we have, I think we're doing a lot of the things we want to do now. Mm-hmm. It's just finding time to elevate them or I don't know what the right word is. Um, they're making yeah. fun of me because I said I had nothing going on. Yeah. I was just talking about <laughs> Twitch. Like I was thinking about my Twitch stuff. Like, do I have anything specific planned for Twitch or the Twitch community? And but I wasn't thinking about all the other stuff. You know, there's a lot of other stuff. <laughs> let's let's do a collab birthday stream of our yeah. That would be fun. <laughs> One of the things I'm really looking I forward to. I'm doing one thing. <laughs> there you go. So we got we got a birthday stream coming up in August. One of the things that I'm really looking forward to, Allison, I don't know uh, how much we've been able to talk about it, but supposedly Twitch said that in the next couple of months, like one of the mm-hmm. big things they're working on is the stream together mm-hmm. thing, which I think has been working better. And they want to make it where, like, if I'm streaming and Medium Janelia is streaming and you're streaming, that we can all stream separately on our own platforms, but they'll come by our chats together. together. Oh, but then people have to pick sides. (laughs) Like, which chat are you going to go to? Well, well, that's the thing, though, is that we can see each other's chats. You know, we would so, be able to like, instance, talk to the communities together if, as one, even if, though they would be in different rooms. Yeah, if Hoaxers yeah. was in your chat and Keisha was in Jenny's chat and CMC Air Boss was in my chat, they would all be able to see everyone else's chat. Oh, that's so they, cool. Yeah, so they can interact from all three people's streams if you're streaming together, which I think is could be a game changer. Mm-hmm. Because I think even that would if, be great. Because so, so then only, it's still like we're still like coming together as one community, but everybody's and you know got their own can do channels their own going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and everyone can decide who they want to watch, but then they're still in the conversation with everybody. Mm-hmm. So even if like, like you know that. someone had fifty viewers and someone had thirty viewers and I had two viewers, it wouldn't matter because I would still see everyone talking in your streams as well. Mm. So there's a benefit to that. Now, Twitch said there was a negative to it. Uh, so they put a back, like a like an out clause for it because some streamers have like 20,000 viewers. Yeah. So like if then so the problem they were seeing that is if like somebody who is a really big streamer wanted to collaborate with a smaller streamer, that might be a lot for that person. They don't know mm-hmm. how to look through a, sh- a chat with, you know, 2000 people. Nope. In it. And so you can <laughs> opt out of it. So when we do the stream together, oh. you could say, I only want to see my chat. Yeah. And so you can do that, but the option is the option is still there. So I think that for us, it would be perfect because really we all have this, like our community is all the same people, you know? So like, you know, hoaxers and Amber would be hanging out with Priestess of Wonderland's channel and, you know, whoever would be in mine and whoever be in Frosty's, but then we're all the same anyway. So we still get to be together. Yeah. Yeah. We share so many, like there's so many people that are just part of, this bigger community that are in everyone else's chats anyway. So it, I think that would work out well. Um, One thing that I would like to do more this summer um, as, as I get a little more downtime is doing some more community uh, game streams, which we've always Mm -hmm. talked about, but I would like to do some more like streamer nights where we can bring in other Twitch streamers like Allison, like you, Erica, like um, uh, Michael, Michael Manis, Manis, like Black you know, Sheep Meat, Black mm-hmm. Sheep Meat, like like other and others as well, to all play games together, especially with that with that thing of being able to combine chats and stuff. Yeah. So we can all play games and everyone can just do their own stream. Um, but then we're all kind of playing together. I think people would like to see that. I think that'd be fun. I like like some of the streamers I watch when they play together. I I, I like I have fun with that. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alder Escape might be one of the opportunities for that. So that could be a lot of fun coming this summer. I so. love playing games, but my computer hates me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's one of the goals I have for this summer is to have some more uh, game nights. Just kind of have fun and hang out and cause some shenanigans. Great. 
Yeah. And then Allison, for our birthday time, I would it would be nice to come back on your stream again, because you had just reshared the video where I came and hung out in Wonderland, and yeah. yeah, I think it would be nice to do that again. Yeah. Well, I told you I wanted to do a Let's Get Stoned episode of like why you choose all the different. Yeah, stones. yeah. Oh, yeah. We can we can still. And do then that I too. forgot. Oh wait, I just committed to a Follow the Moon challenge, and then I had like. <laughs> I just commit to too many things, but I am excited to like talk about like why do you choose the stone? Yeah, you choose? we all we all do that. Commit to many to too many things, <laughs> and then we're constantly trying to come up with more shit to do. Why do we I do know. this to ourselves? <laughs> I just try to like think like okay, this is a cool idea. It will happen one day. Let's focus on what's in front of me. Oh, journey of self discovery had a good idea. Uh, and invite Allison over for a sl sleepover slumber party. Well, that would I be saying I have to go to Richmond anyway <laughs> at some point in time. It, it... Well, even if it was just a Twitch, because you did your Twitch slumber party, mm -hmm. that would be fun oh to do collab God, too. Yeah. So yeah. That yeah, would be kind of our fun pajamas. to see you guys hanging out in the in Jenny's like little stream room there and yeah. having a fun night streaming live. That could be or like, cool. yeah, I mean, in in person, one would be super cool. But I'm saying, if that's not an option, we oh, can yeah. still do it oh, on yeah, Twitch. Well... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I got a whole woo woo room. There's plenty of floor space, and put sleeping bags out. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've hit ten fifteen. So we. Yeah. Tonight was fun though. I started talking about adulting. So. <laughs> Yeah. Go. Tonight yeah. was fun. I oh, enjoyed it. And then the conversation turned to Texas. Oh, let's get it. <laughs> let's bring it home. <laughs> let's bring it home. Yeah. All right. Well, bring thanks everybody up. for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, I, I had a fun time doing the stream. We'll have to do yeah. more of these, of just kind of the hangout yeah. streams. Mm -hmm. It's always nice. Thanks for everybody for hanging out. We'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll uh, be hanging out. Uh, over in yours tomorrow. What, uh, when's your next stream, Allison? Do you know? <laughs> Monday, my ear. Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. I don't know. All right. I have, I, I put the, the link up earlier. It wouldn't let me pin it, but I put the link up to your YouTube earlier. So go check out Allison's new videos, the, uh, let's get stone videos. And, uh, and, uh, thank, and thanks for coming on. I appreciate Allison. Thanks for hanging out with us the whole night. Thanks. So yeah, great. so fun. And uh, we're going to go raid. We got uh, Black Sheep Meat and Yoerica on. I've gotten to raid yep. Black Sheep Meat quite a bit, so let's go raid Yoerica. She's playing What's yes. the Music. Yes. So maybe we can go play some What's the Music with her. I want to play What's the Music. Yeah. That's mm. fun. All right, everybody. Take care. Have a wonderful evening. Go get everything ready for, uh, you know, get ready for the Eclipse on Monday. We'll talk to you all soon. Take care. And we'll see you all next time. Bye.